avocado, like all fruits, they co-evolved with an animal that would be able to eat them whole and pass the seed hole. But avocados have such a big pit, there's no actual animal alive that can eat a whole avocado. But the th one theory is that they're used to, they co-evolved with the giant sloth in South America. That was the only animal that would be able to um, eat the eat the avocado whole. Welcome to the vibe flow. With Jordan and Will. Let's go. Tech news and AI trends. Tune in now with your friends. All right, welcome to the Vibe Flow. Cheyenne is our guest of honor today. Cheyenne Guha, welcome to the show. Honored to be here. So I've been waiting, been waiting I... for this invite for so long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheyenne and I go way back. We were the first engineers at a company called Teleborder uh, with our other good friend, Trey, who I tried to bring on the show, but he is in Hawaii right now, so he can't make it. Um, also, you might ask, where's Will? My, my typical co-host here, Will, is also in Hawaii, coincidentally. So that is why I have decided to bring on a lovely guest, Cheyenne. So live, currently... live from a utility closet. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> a little bit less lux than my, uh, not, not the lake, not the lake. <laughs> Check out that lake. I'm going lake Making life. Me jealous, yeah. Lake life in Washington right now. Uh, but let me just give you a proper intro, Cheyenne. So Cheyenne is the co-founder and CTO of Avocado. Avocado, yes. a fresh take on a point of sale. I don't want to embarrass you and play this video. But, uh, yeah, anything you want to say about it? Any, any, uh, any elevator pitch for it? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we've been working on this for the last four, four and a half years been grinding and um, started with food trucks going up going up market now into more full service restaurants. One of our places actually got a Michelin nod, which we're really excited oh, about. Oh, and so, congrats. Yeah, we're uh, we're kind of taking on square and toast with a small five person team and I love it's been it. fun so far. Yeah. I love it. Sean, re remind me, what was the name of your business before it was avocado? It was not a riff on Wolflow. We <laughs> <laughs> it was called Insta Menu. It was we it was more of a riff on Instagram, I think. No, I don't know. It was actually my my co-founder, um, Nick, kind of, he's like a self-proclaimed naming guru. So he's like, I, I decree this Insta menu. I was like, okay, let's go for it. And then I he came. Him. I, I don't think it was very good. I'm really glad. <laughs> but a year later, it. he's like, I decree us avocado. And like, that was, that was a much better. Yeah. <laughs> Cheyenne just like goes off. I can't contact him for like a year. And he comes back and he's like beating around the bush a little bit. And then I see founder of Instamenu. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he just go <laughs> rip off Woflow? But it, it is very different. Yeah, I guess the name could work for both. We could also be called Woflow, you know, because it's... <laughs> well, I could be called Avocado. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? Why yeah. not? Um, cool. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I have a question. Just kicking it off here. Um, I really wanted to get Nick on as well. He is unavailable. Mm. Maybe we'll bring him on another another yeah. time. He what loves, is his uh, nose? loves his nose. What's the thing on his nose? I looked at Oh up. yeah. I mean that's I that's like up. our our number one like sales um that closes that helps us close the sales, you know, that, that converts converts these leads into actual customers. It basically it, it's a way to like open your your nasal passage. A lot of people just use it when they're sleeping to breathe better. And yeah, he, he doesn't, it's he this. never, There's I've Nick. never seen him without it in the last three years. And I think he's, he says like it helps him breathe better, but it's also a great like conversation starter. It and, sure is. Cause we're talking yeah. about it right now. Exactly. I looked then, it up. Is it this? It's intake. Exactly. Yeah. Intake. Okay. So he's, okay. he's working on a, um, on a contract with them, you know, going to be their brand ambassador. So. I is he that. really? No. Oh. <laughs> he should be though. <laughs> he might as well. Because yeah, now our it. our sales guys both have them, and you know some this influencer we we're working with in Austin, like he suddenly showed up in his videos with it too, and he he definitely ripped it off of us. But what it is what it is. Can he take it off for that sixty second video yeah. that you guys made? I don't know. He I think he feels he said he feels kind of naked without it, so I didn't I didn't push it. <laughs> hey, I respect the game. I respect yeah. it. Um, okay, well let's let's get into the one and only topic I have for today, and. I saved it for for you. Nice. Will's interested in this topic, but I don't think he would have gotten a huge kick out of talking about it for a whole 20 minutes. So here we are. And it is what stack, what 
engineering stack do people use in 2025? For the record, Ryan and I both come from a Ruby on Rails background yeah. originally, right? I'm, I'm still on it. I'm, I'm, Ooh, hardcore, okay. I'm hardcore Rails still. Okay. There's well, dozens is, of us still great. left, yeah. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Um, I will confess, I'm also partially still on it. Nice. I think, I still think it's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic stack. For those of you who don't know, it's um, Ruby is a language. Ruby on Rails is like a framework for the language. It's one of the original frameworks that um, was really designed for higher level developers, I guess you'd say. So those that want to like bootstrap companies really, really fast, um, put on by 37 signals. What was it? It was Basecamp? Yeah, DHH, like, DHH what started yeah. it, and that he then he also, I think, soon after started Thirty Seven Signals. So he's like kind of yeah. like the founder of both, both. or okay, maybe yeah. vice versa. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, he's he's involved in both. Yeah, um, and I still think it's great, but I'm going to put a big but on okay. here because we still use it. I am all in on Next.js mono repos, hmm. and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. In the era of AI, if you are doing any sort of vibe coding where you want to go full zero to one, like using a V0 or a lovable, which we talk about obsessively on this show all the time, it's going to use a mono, it's going to use Vercel, or sorry, Vercel, it's going to use V0. Sorry, it's going to use Next.js. Yeah, it's definitely. Because it's all in one. And it's, in, it's just incredibly ingrained in today's uh, development life cycle. Mm -hmm. do, do you do you use it? What, do, yeah, are you so exclusively we exclusively so, on Rails. What's your stack? Yeah, our stack we have our we have our GraphQL API on Rails, and then our whole um, all of our uh, web based apps are on Next.js, and then we use uh, Expo React Native for our actual p point of sale app that runs on iPads and or that runs on iOS and Android. That's right. You guys have uh, some embedded systems going on there because exactly. you guys are on. Uh, POS. Yeah. And what do you find you spend the most of your time in? And you are um, you are still a pretty hardcore IC, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. getting my I'm getting my fingers dirty. Yeah. Hands dirty love every it. every day. Um, this is kind of wherever I'm needed. I'm so we're we have a we're a team of three engineers. So I'm mainly on the GraphQL API. I'm I'm the Rails guy, but I. You know, I'll, I'll, you would I'll be. work and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's my baby. So I, 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 I uh... your team's like, oh, put the guy with the gray beard on the rails. App. Exactly. We'll, yeah. we'll take the, we'll take the next chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I'm, I have my hands at everything and it's like part of the reason we didn't go full next JS is because we have this mobile app that also consumes the same API. So it was nice to have, uh, one like standalone API that's just, handling the GraphQL and then... And why? Well, I guess I ask why because first I'll explain what our, like, I guess where we're, where I'm migrating to mentally. Yeah. Um, we started out fully in Rails um, with us, with the GraphQL API. Then mm -hmm. we adopted a um, React front end. It was not using Next.js at the time. And we have since evolved to a Next uh, a next front end app consuming a back end rest api and rails and now i'm slowly i'm not going to say i am like removing it entirely but mm -hmm. i'm starting to use some apis that we're building in the next app and i'm also okay. starting to use we use superbase for our database so i'm also starting to use some of their native APIs. So okay. basic things like spinning up your own GraphQL server in Rails is obsolete, right? You can actually just use Superbase. They already have that. So kind of takes takes a good amount of load off. Yeah. So basically you're saying like you're using Superbase where I'm using Rails. So the, yes. those are interchangeable. And then, yeah, we also have the Next.js monorepo also has some APIs that just those front ends consume. And a lot of our AI workflows are actually in that Next.js uh, project as well, but and uh, do you, when when writing code or you know just talking to your AI assistant who writes code for you, do you find it writes better Next.js code or better Rails code? And this is a deep a great, question, and yeah, that's a great question. I think it's actually I was actually just debating this with my team. I think it's actually better at Rails because 
it has like 20 years of of code and open a lot of open source code to look at and the problem sometimes with Next.js is that it has changed so much you know there's the page router there's the app router maybe not not now maybe now it's figured it out but maybe like six months or ago like sometimes it start generating like page router code when we're only using app routing and it's just there's like the documentation it, it can't distinguish between what is the latest version and what is like a legacy version but i completely get that um for the record for everybody else rails has been around forever 20 years um i believe cheyenne you have been using it to, since 2006 we've had this conversation 2008 and... no it's either five or six. I'm trying to remember. Okay, yeah, I think it was. So, you, so you were you were on it six, in the yeah, very 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 beginning. Yeah. Um, I believe I got on it in 2011. Nice. Um, so we've both been on for quite a while, and so it does have a huge amount of repository data to be able to train from. Yeah. Um, I find, and so funny that you said that you think Next JS has, um, like legacy. It like tries to give you more legacy. Uh, style. Yeah. I, it's interesting because why would it not give us legacy style of rails? Like if I look at a lot of open source rails projects, they're using super old rails methods because they've been around for 20 years, but it's like, it's at least as far, you know, I have to, I have to dig in this a little more, but nothing has been as big of a paradigm shift recently as moving from page routing to app routing where you have to kind of like to go at least my understanding is like to go to app routing you have to basically rewrite all the stuff but rails was always kind of backwards compatible yeah and and it's been kind it's been it seems like it's been stable for at least the last i don't know since fair. since we worked at teleporter fair fair all right first off how's my audio Are they wind chiming? Hmm. I love I love the shirt, by the way. I don't know. Maybe this is yeah. a, maybe this is the side. But do you know the do you know the story of slots and avocados? No. Tell you know, me. like so, like avocado is a fruit, right? And like all fruits, they should they're they co evolved with an animal that would be able to eat them whole and pass the seed hole. But avocados have such a big pit. There's no the theory is like there's no actual animal alive that can eat a whole avocado, but the th one theory is that they used to, they co-evolved with the giant sloth in South America. That was the only animal that would that would be able to um, eat the eat the avocado whole. Interesting. Yeah. So is that it's meant to be? Is that why is that why your name is avocado? <laughs> That's why. I, I don't know. I think it was just. I think it just came to Nick in a dream one day, and I think nice. it was part of the part of the process, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, Shine. Let's talk about teleporter. Mm -hmm. I want to just get into, let's just get into the, some stories. Yeah. Teleporter was great. So we were there for three years, I think, right? Something was it like only that? three years? Yeah. I don't think it was too long. It felt like a, it felt like a, an epic story though. Like It was an yeah. epic story. And it was one of these. It was a nice, a nice, <laughs> it was a nice high, yeah. a nice low. Um, but a nice, a nice great. landing too. Great. A nice landing. It was too. a good landing. It was a good yeah. landing, um, but I want to talk about the how engineering teams work together, how they evolved then, and how they evolved now. Mm -hmm. So you are you said you're a team of five. Is it team three? of? But yeah, three of us are engineers, and then okay, so three three engineers. So that's like the same size as when it was you, me, and Trey back yeah. at Teleborder. What's the what is like the core difference in dynamic that you can think of from two thousand and 15, 16, whenever we were at Teleborder to now at Avocado. Hmm. Like, I think because because it was in a similar stage, right? Like, sort of new, definitely like product market fit ish. Like, we know where we're going. So we like have a good strategy. Like, how do you build it? But What's it's like, the difference? I think the, bi the big difference now is like, you could, you could do so much with those, with the same three people. Like, we're, yeah. like, um, I'd like to, I'm pr I proudly say, you know, we're we're switching people off of Square and Toast with thousand people teams, and we have three engineers, and it's just amazing what you can do nowadays. With, I mean, obviously, like we started this pre pre um, AI copilots, but just with 
with all the open source software there is all the all the other SaaS tools out there yeah. you could you could launch really quickly and now the AI tool tooling just let, lets you move so much faster. So it's just speed. You think just the speed and like the complexity that you can tackle with with such a such a small team. Okay. Yeah, I would I would tend tend to agree. I also think the I guess like there's a the, a huge difference in the last one year. So if we had this conversation like two years ago, it might actually mm -hmm. be like a whole different conversation. But I think this last one year has really changed things up. I think what what I've seen is like a lot of um, t just tools have come out. Like developer tools have been so hardcore. Like the the that market has just been booming for the last ten years. And so anything you can imagine that was a problem has been relatively resolved. A lot of infrastructure stuff. So I remember back at Teleporter, we were one of the first to adopt like a Heroku, um, which I'm still actually a big fan of. Yeah, but, I'm, uh, we're yeah. actually still running <laughs> mostly on Heroku, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it, I, I love it. I love it, it yeah. Um, but not, I, it's still not like insanely popular, especially for- Yeah, it's um, kind of like died it, down now. It's but, kind of died down. Yeah. Um, but those types of tools have really emerged as uh, just to make software engineering just way faster, right? It's like, like all you want to do if you're an engineer is just like, well, you used to just want to write code. Now you just want to have something else write your code and you just review it, right? Exactly. And so you just yeah. want to build stuff. You want to ship it, right? So I'm trying to ship yeah. it. That's all you got to do. And so the <laughs> thing is the tools that really like changed the game for the last 10 years. And then now that we have, all, we've abstracted all this other complexity and all you want to do is write code. Now something's come around. Now we don't even write code. So what mm. the hell do we do? <laughs> <laughs> you just keep, yeah, we're, we're kind of focusing a lot on testing now, but you know, hopefully we can, we're, we're looking for the right um, AI assisted tools there to, to automate a lot of our testing too. So I think it's just kind of like your imagination is the limit now. Of what you oh, I like build. that. I like that. All right, Shane, to wrap us up, we need to have one teleborder story that is suitable for work. Suitable for work. Okay, that's that might be tough. <laughs> I'm just joking. What was that? I do was remember. I was just trying to reminisce. Yeah. Um, it was I, right in Union Square. Was our office, so there was yeah. just so many like random nights where, and there was like a club down the street. Do you remember that club? Slide or... Was Ruby it Slide? Sky? I don't remember. Yeah, that's where we had the acquisition party. Yes, so yeah, that's right. Okay. I just remember like random weeknights. We'd just like end up, we'd be like working <laughs> till super late. And then we would just go to that thing, have a drink. And then we'd go back to the office. Yeah. And it's just like so random. And then um, Sarah had that like brain damage incident, you know, but... I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, last last one here. What were the bathroom keys, the keychains? Oh, yeah. I want to bring this back for Woflow. <laughs> so the 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 place across the street was a was a department Saks store. Saks Fifth. It was not. It was like another like old Saks. timey. It was Saks. Okay. I think it was. Yeah, something like that. But they were they were going out of business, and they were, they had the mannequins. Everything was for sale, including the mannequins. So yeah, of course, one day Jordan showed up with a bunch of uh, body parts, and he's like, where? incorporating this into our office now and <laughs> <laughs> so our bathroom key was like a severed arm and well, after, a mannequin arm a mannequin arm yeah not yeah. not a human <laughs> not a real human one yeah but it's a mannequin arm and after that like it we never lost the bathroom key again like up until that moment it was it was always drama around who lost the bathroom key where yes where do we go and like that that just changed the game that's the See, it was that's the beauty of, the of good design solution. yeah it was it was an out of the box solution. We lose bathroom keys at our office all the time. I'm going to resolve this, and I now yeah. I remember how to do it. Yeah, I think there are some new stores that might have mannequins available. I'll just order them on. I'll just get them. I'll just get a mannequin arm on like two minutes. It's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, totally right. fine. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, Shine. Thanks for coming on to the Vibe Flow today, deep diving into Thanks some nerdy ass tech. Loved yeah. it. Um, and for everyone at home, please subscribe, watch, follow, like, do all the things that you can. And we'll see you next week back with me and Will. Maybe Cheyenne, you know, maybe we'll bring yeah, it back. Yeah, I would love to, love to pop happens. in whenever you have me. Yeah, Love it. Awesome. Right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Take Bye. care. Bye.